What's going on? Mr. T here with even more index laws. Okay, so as usual, we'll start off with a uh, good old scenario. All right, let's look at this. We have two to the two x, not two to the x, two x in brackets raised to the fourth. Right. Well, what's going on here? Well, when we raise something to the fourth, we multiply it by itself four times. So this would be 2x times 2x times 2x times 2x, right? Four times. One, two, three, four. Well, 2x is 2 times x, right? So we get 2 times x times 2 times x times 2 times x and so forth, right? Four twos, four x's, right? Well, when you're multiplying, you can rearrange things however you want. So let's take all the twos and put them first and then all the x's, right? And now we can see, hey, look, four twos, four x's, right? Well, two times two times two times two is just two to the fourth. And x times x times x times x is x to the fourth, right? So um, you'll notice here, basically when we have things being multiplied together in brackets raised to a power, basically we just end up with each of those two things raised to a power, okay? Now we can uh, finish this problem kind of by saying, that 2 to the 4th is 16, right? 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So just to make that problem look nice. But the important thing was that we had 2 to the 4th, right? Because we had a 2 here to the 4th there, and then we also had x to the 4th, okay? This brings us to index law number 4, okay? Which says that if we have two things being multiplied in brackets, raised to a power, Right, then basically we end up with the first thing to that power times the second thing to that power, right? And that is index law number four. Let's look at index law number five. Um, and here's our scenario for index law number five. We have a fraction this time. Things being divided, two divided by x in brackets raised to a power, right? Um, so you can probably guess what's going to happen here based on what happened a minute ago, but when we raise something to the fourth, we've got that thing multiplied four times, right? So 2 over x times 2 over x times 2 over x times 2 over x. Well, when we multiply fractions, we multiply the top, right? Uh, times the top, the top of one times the top of the other, and we can multiply all the tops together, right? So we get 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And then, again, with the bottom, we do uh, the bottom times the bottom times the bottom, right? With, like, all these fractions. So we get um, x times x times x on the bottom. And, of course, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 2 to the 4th. And on the bottom, we get x to the 4th, right? Which, of course, um, if you want to make it look nice, you can make that 16. But the important thing is we add 2 to the 4th and x to the 4th, right? Um, so you can pretty clearly see there that we've got index law number five, where if we have a fraction, okay, things being divided, and the whole thing in brackets raised to a power, then what we get is the top raised to that power divided by the bottom raised to that power. Okay, So let's look at some examples. We're going to simplify some expressions using index law four. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we've got stuff in brackets raised to one, all raised to one power. And basically what we're going to do is take each individual little piece and raise it to that power. So we're going to get negative two, and I put it in its own brackets, which is always a good idea. And we're going to raise that to the power four, right? And then we've got x cubed, right? In its own brackets raised to the fourth power. And then we've got y to the fourth, which doesn't really need its own brackets, um, mainly because it doesn't have a negative or a three, but it's always okay to put brackets um, around stuff like that y. There's no, nothing wrong with putting brackets there, but you don't need them in this case. Okay, now we need to evaluate these and simplify them, and you'll notice we've got index law number three right here, right? So um, we've got negative two to the fourth, which is just negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. 
and there's four negatives in there, an even number of negatives, so it comes out positive. And of course, two to the fourth is 16. We've seen that a couple times here lately. Um, and then we have x to the third to the fourth. So we do three times four. So we have x to the twelfth, and then y to the fourth just tags along. No more like terms to combine there, so that one's done. Okay, now in this case, very similar. But we've, this time we've got the 4 outside of the parentheses, outside of the brackets, right? So that 4 is just going to tag along. It's just going to start us off. We just leave it, okay? But then we put the rest of these things in brackets and raise them to that power that we had out here. So 2 to the 4th, right? C squared to the 4th, right? And then D cubed to the 4th as well. So let's simplify all of those. Again, the 4 just kind of comes along, right? And we're gonna, it's, all these things are being multiplied, so 4 times 2 to the 4th, which, again, 16, right? C to the 8th, because 2 times 4 is 8. And then D to the 12th, because 3 times 4 is 12. And then finally, 4 times 16, we can combine these, right? So 4 times 16 is 64. So 64, C to the 8th, D to the 12th. Okay, more examples. Woohoo! Let's simplify some more expressions using any and all index laws necessary. Okay, these are some pretty big ones. Lots of stuff going on. All kinds of colors. Okay, so we'll start with this one. First thing we notice is we've got a fraction raised to a power. Okay, so we're going to have the top, right? Negative two a squared. We're going to have that. We can take that and put it in brackets and raise it to that power. And we take the bottom, 3b c cubed, all raised to that power. All right, so that's uh, using index law 5. All right, and then we're going to use index law 4 and kind of distribute that power to all each of these things. So we get, and I'm going to kind of just go straight for it here, negative 2 cubed is negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. So that's negative 8. And then a squared cubed is a to the sixth, right? Because 2 times 3 is 6. And then on the bottom, we'll get 3 cubed, which is 27. 3 times 3 times 3. And then b cubed, right? And then c cubed cubed. So 3 times 3 is 9. So 3c to the ninth. Okay? Whew. All right. Next one. Even bigger, right? We've got this thing, this big fraction cubed, times this fraction cubed. Okay, so we'll do them one at a time. Just start with this one first. Okay, and we're going to take the top of this one and do it to the, to the third, and then the bottom and raise that to the third. So we get x to the sixth, because x squared cubed, let's do, you know, x, we have the base of x, and 2 times 3 is 6, and then we're going to have a base of y, and 3 times 3 is 9, and then, of course, just c cubed, because it was just c to start with, times this other thing, right? And again, we're going to do everything on the top of this one to the fourth and everything on the bottom to the fourth. So x to the fourth, c to the fourth, y to the fourth. That one's pretty easy. Well, now we need to combine these fractions. We've got, um, it's just one fraction times the other, so we do the top times the top and the bottom times the bottom. So we've got x to the sixth times x to the fourth, right? These are our like terms. So those combine six plus four using index law one. That's six. That's a, that'll be x to the tenth. Now the y to the ninth is the only thing on the top, so that just stays. And then same thing with c to the fourth. That just comes along. And then on the bottom, same kind of with the c and the y on top. The c and the y are the only things on the bottom. They don't combine, so we just write them in. C cubed y to the fourth. But we're not quite done. We've got y's on the top and y's on the bottom, c's on the top and c's on the bottom. And this would be index law 2. We've got c to the ninth divided by c to the fourth. So we do 9 minus 4. Well, first of all, we keep the x to the tenth because there's no x's to cancel out. All right? So the x to the tenth stays. And then 9 minus 4 is 5. So we get y to the fifth. And then 4 minus 1, uh, sorry, 4 minus 3 is 1, so we get just plain c, right? c to the 1, but we don't need to write the 1. So that's the answer. 
Alrighty. There's your index laws. Enjoy.